ask a lot of questions, but uh, where should we go first, Dr. Stallman? Can you hear me, first of all? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Go ahead. Good. Uh, so it might be good to talk about what we know of government's massive surveillance of people in general. Because we found out a lot about this since the last time I was on the show, if I remember right. Yes, sir. So let's talk about it. The Snowden revelations, all of it, confirm what you've been saying. Well, yes, and we should express our appreciation of Edward Snowden. So three cheers for Edward Snowden. Hip, hip, hurrah. Hip, hip, hurrah. Hip, hip, hurrah. We have to say that very often. I say that in my speeches and ask people to cheer him because uh, they're the people who don't want us to know how they're mistreating us call Snowden a criminal and they say he should be assassinated. We have to not just think that he's a hero, but say he's a hero and invite others to say so to counteract the movement to demonize him. In any case, thanks to his heroism, we now know of many ways that the government collects data about people in general and then misrepresents, you know, using t twisted bureaucratic language to make it seem that that's not what they're doing. But that is what, um, thanks to the careful analysis done by journalists, we know that that's what the government is doing. And we just found out that <clears throat> many countries in Europe have made deals w saying, we'll give you access to snoop on people through our systems as long as you promise not to use them to snoop on our citizens. Of course, they can't tell that that promise is being kept, but it doesn't even matter because if each country says you can use our digital systems to snoop on everybody except the people in our country, then they can snoop on anybody through the systems of other countries. So what does this imply? It puts democracy in danger. You see, the idea of democracy is that the people control what the state does, and that enables the people to have the state do the things that they want it to do and not do the things they don't want it to do. But in order to control what the state does, we need to know what the state is doing. And that's difficult when states act secretly. And in order to find out what they're really doing, we need heroes like Snowden, whistleblowers. And we've got to defend him because if they can bring him down, they'll be able to sell the rollout of total surveillance publicly that was already there. When right. Exactly. They, they also, they want to bring him down so as to scare anyone else from trying to tell us what the state is doing to us. He was exposing criminal activity. He is a hero, and the criminals are saying they want to murder a U.S. citizen. This is outrageous. Yeah, although, of course, under the First Amendment, you can say that you think uh, certain kinds of people ought to be killed. Uh, you can't ask someone to actually do it. But, uh, you know, freedom of speech is pretty broad. and the point. Uh, but when it's government not, officials doing it, I think it crosses the line. It becomes <clears throat> very dangerous. Maybe so. It, well, in any case, it is dangerous. But for me, the crucial point is we want to defend Snowden and get it clearly established that we regard him as a hero. And that and clearly established that the government... We need to celebrate to Snowden. We need to celebrate him. We need to celebrate him, as you're saying. Yeah. In any case, the point is... <clears throat> The government doesn't want other people to tell us what the government's doing. And therefore, it tries to demonize whistleblowers, prosecute them. But in order to do that, it has to figure out who they are. So this leads us to a conclusion. How much general surveillance can permit the existence of democracy? And the answer is... If there's enough general surveillance to find the whistleblowers, then we can't have democracy. And we know the NSA on record is aimed at the media now and aimed at whistleblowers to yep. suppress speech and people exposing crime. I want to come back with you, Dr. Stallman, after this quick break to continue your analysis. And then I want to get into...
not just the government, all, as you've pioneered exposing the corporations with all their spy tech and everything. Where is this going if we don't turn it around? How do we stop it? Stay with us. It's time to kick some ash because cigarettes have met their match. Smokers are switching to Vapriate e-liquid by La Cig because when you kick ash, you kick tar and smelly smoke too. La Cig smokes the competition with real people customer service, a seven-day satisfaction guarantee, and same-day fast free shipping. Become a vapor today at LaCig.com, spelled L-E-C-I-G.com. La Cig e-cigarettes. Kick some ash. Silver has always been nature's very own antibiotic, and only one system allows you to generate an endless supply of natural silver solutions, silverlungs.com. You'll find no wild claims or pseudoscience, just a lifetime of nano-sized pure silver solutions. The Silver Lungs Generator allows you to make your own, so stop paying for silver solutions. The unique lung delivery system targets respiratory infections where other silver solutions simply cannot reach. See the Silver Lungs Generator and Lung Delivery System at silverlungs.com. That's silverlungs.com. Great news, pure water lovers. BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com has a special discount offer for all GCN listeners. You can't do better than a Big Berkey for economy. For only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. There's none better than a Big Berkey for emergency preparedness as a backup water source. And you just can't beat a Big Berkey to remove dangerous chlorine, all types of fluoride, pathogenic bacteria, cysts, parasites, and unhealthy byproducts from municipal water. Berkey water filter systems are even powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. For the gold standard in water filters, get a Big Berkey at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And all GCN listeners get 5% off all ceramic filter systems. For details, call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey water filters for the love of clean water. It's been said, those who control the food control the people. Are you concerned about GMO foods making you sick and affecting your mind? Many people suffer from lack of energy, insomnia, loss of stamina, weight gain, and the inability to think clearly. Genetically modified crops, processed foods, and toxic chemicals can compromise your health and are silently destroying your digestive system, which accounts for 80% of your immune system. Take back control of your health with Pro-EM1 Probiotic from Terraganics. Pro-EM1 Probiotic helps protect your body against irritable bowel syndrome, constipation, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, diabetes, the common cold, and much more. And including a powerful probiotic like Pro-EM1 as part of your daily routine puts you back in control and prevents you from becoming a mindless zombie manipulated by the pharmaceutical and GMO agendas. Call Terraganics at 866-369-3678 or visit Terraganics.com. T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Hi there. My name is Frank Bates. What I'm about to tell you in the next 60 seconds could get me in a lot of trouble. I just created a free video presentation at 123coverup.com that exposes the electricity monopolies and government agencies for what they really are. Incompetent, lying crooks that are counting on your ignorance and fear to keep your power bills criminally high. Some have called this a conspiracy. Others have called it a cover-up, and you will be shocked to find out how deep the conspiracy goes. My video at 123coverup.com exposes the truth and shows you the secret of how I beat them and how you can beat them too. Watch the controversial video that thousands of other smart patriots have already seen in the last three months. Go to 123coverup.com and discover one weird trick to slash your power bill and protect your home. Go watch my video now at 123coverup.com before they force me to shut it down. Again, that's 123coverup.com. Alex Jones here back live. Dr. Richard Stallman, genu.org, G-N-U.org, or Stallman.org, a pioneer of uh, internet freedom, free speech, inventor of really some of the only alternatives to the horrible operating systems and things that are designed to spy on us. And uh, he uh, joins us now. This is a six-minute segment, long 18-minute segment coming up. He says he will take phone calls. So I'll give that number out coming up in the next segment, you know, tech questions, internet freedom questions for Dr. Stallman. So where are we in the battle lines? I mean, it's not just the government, as you've said. It's everything from television sets to, quote, smartphones to smart meters.
to cars having black boxes that track us to taxes. They're just putting all these Trojan horses and everything openly and saying they're going to be able to predict the future and manipulate us and corner markets with all the stolen data. But it's really a revolution of the thieves and of the snoops to take over the culture. And then I guess you're one of the top generals out there fighting it. Um, what, I mean, obviously, you've spoken about Aaron Swartz, uh, how they came after him. Um, this is a war, is it not, Dr. Stallman? Well, yes and no. First, I should fill in a gap in what I said in the previous segment. Why is it that uh, this level of general surveillance is incompatible with democracy? It's because the level of general surveillance of people's communications makes it possible to identify the whistleblower. They can see which officials or staff people talked with a journalist, and that means they can find out who blew the whistle, and they can punish those people, and that's what makes them scared, to, people scared to do it. So we must re redesign digital systems so that they don't collect enough data to let the government f find the whistleblowers. And that's a massive technological change that we need to make. Now, you've brought up the point that a lot of this surveillance is directly done by companies, and they do it mostly for their commercial reasons. They want to predict what sorts of things people will buy and so on, uh, transforming advertising from an, a mere annoyance to something dangerous when they add the tracking of people to it. But the point is, the business surveillance of people is dangerous because the data they collect is available to the state. So they're like, so it's that each business is like another tentacle of the state surveillance apparatus. And they and trade the baseball cards, uh, and they all share in the data mining. Yeah. So the point is, we have to redesign all of these systems so that they don't track what people are doing, except for those people who are the subject of a court order because there was some reason to suspect a particular person, and that authorizes investigation of someone. Well, we always protected whistleblowers until just recently. We've seen an incredible persecution of legitimate whistleblowers. Well, actually, we didn't always protect them. For instance, Daniel Ellsberg, uh, Nixon tried to prosecute him, but the prosecutors made a mistake and they had to drop the case. Sure, I mean, I mean the press used to come to the aid more of whistleblowers. Yes, that's true. And in addition, Obama has attacked whistleblowers with an energy unlike any previous president, or maybe even all, I think I read it was all previous presidents. That's what I meant, there's an escalation. Yes. And we also see many practices meant to invite people into being surveilled, like Facebook, like the car insurance companies that say they'll charge you less if you install the black box that, box that records where your car goes. And then there are the the navigator devices that record everywhere your car goes. If you buy a GPS navigator box to stick in your car on the dashboard, well, it records everywhere that you go, and if you ever connect it to the net to update the maps, it says where you went. How do you like that? And that's because it's not free software. See, that's how the surveillance connects with free software, because Basically, with the surveillance issue connects with the free software issue. With software, either the users control the program, that's free software, or the program controls the users, which is non-free, uh, proprietary user-subjugating software. Now, when I started the free software movement, it was because non-free software is an injustice in itself, of the fact that you can't have control over the program you're running. But ethical standards in the software industry have fallen over the years. And nowadays, it's quite common for the developers of proprietary non-free software to put in surveillance functionalities and other malicious things like Dr. That. Stallman, that is so important when we come back. I'm going to give you the floor to talk about that because... Not only is it now you're paying for the software that's spying on you, but it doesn't work well. I mean, I, I run a media company and and most of the equipment and stuff has spy grids 
and blockers on it where the stuff is useless because they don't. It's amazing. Stay with us. We're on the mark.